We had players in their prime and retired legends, but today we have an exciting youngster as my latest guest in Ruben La from Wellington, New Zealand. Welcome to the RP Chat with Angus show, Ruben. Cheers, Angus. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be talking to you. Yeah, thanks for your time, by the way. Um, you are quite a talented sportsman, which saw you to be the first player for, selected for both New Zealand under 18, Maori rugby and cricket sides during your high school career with Palmerston North. What made you decide to give rugby the preference over cricket? Um, yeah, well, I guess there was a, there's a clear pathway for rugby and uh, it was a very hard decision. Uh, a lot of long nights uh, up, up late talking with my parents about which way to go. Um, but I felt like rugby has always been a, a part of my life and I started at a pretty young age at, at four years old. So uh, at the end of my school career, it was, it was a pretty straightforward just, uh, decision to, to go towards rugby. Oh, awesome, man. And I also think, and um, I'm not sure if it's the same for you, but um, growing up in a country where rugby is mostly a dominant sport, you kind of edge towards that sort of thing because obviously the All Blacks, you know, being the most dominant sports team in the history, you know, of all sports teams, arguably, it's probably better to go that route as opposed to cricket, eh? Yeah, yeah, well, the All Blacks are like superheroes uh, yeah. growing up in New Zealand. <laughs> Uh, watching them my whole life and my my father played for the Māori All Blacks and the Junior All Blacks but never quite got to the to the All Blacks so um you know hopefully one day I can hopefully get to uh, get to where he was and maybe push one further. Oh, no pressure. Eh? <laughs> um your position is mainly first five is that correct that you played at Palms uh, right? Or mainly fullback yeah fullback but uh, yeah. cover first five and, and wings as well. Mm. But in the Hurricane squad, you are listed as an outside back, where high ball yes. skills become ever more apparent in the modern game. Do you think it's important for schoolboys to do a variety of sports, not just to see which one they prefer, but also the different skill sets that another sport can teach you in your sport of preference going forward? Yes, yeah, 100%. Um, you know, I'll push that uh, pretty, pretty thoroughly. Um, Different sports require different skill sets, whether it's basketball, hockey, cricket, uh, you know, even table tennis and such like that. Um, so, you know, when I was a kid, I liked to, to play any sport there was, uh, anything I could get my hands on. So I was pretty grateful that my parents were pretty supportive of whichever sport I wanted to play. And 100%, um, you know, it, to, if I was to talk to any kid, I'd, I'd tell them to get their hands on as much sports as, as possible. Yeah, because um, I've seen it a lot myself, the way, um, especially in South Africa where we live, that um, rugby is obviously a big thing here as well. And um, parents, especially, they push their children to sort of live their dreams. I've seen, you know, like maybe the father didn't make it um, as, a, as a first team player at his school. So he wants his son to be a first team player in rugby. But then the kid has other interests. Um, and I think it's super cool that your parents allowed you to, you know, explore basically and do what you want to and then leave the decision in your hands at the end of the day. Um, and then this year was quite special. I know 2020 was a bit of a roller coaster for all of us, but it's your Mitre 10 Cup debut for the Lions, and you have the rare honor of scoring on your debut against Bay of Plenty in a win, by the way. How was that occasion for you? Uh, yeah, it was pretty surreal. You know, it was, uh, it was a pretty long day, a long build up. Uh, I tried to get to sleep before the game because it, it was a night game at 7 30, but couldn't, couldn't quite get to sleep. Um, but yeah, I'm lost for words speaking about it. Um, I was just pretty grateful to have my family there and have my partner tuning in um, on the live stream from, from overseas in Australia. Oh, she's also doing the long distance thing, eh? <laughs> yes, you know, she, she plays cricket. Um, her name's oh. Amelia Kerr. She plays cricket for New Zealand and for the Brisbane Heat uh, in the Australian comp at the moment. So um, yeah, I'm pretty grateful that she was be able to support me from wherever she is. And that's also awesome, man. I also have a girlfriend in Germany, actually. And um, yeah, it's not always easy with her being on the other side of the world, but we still make it work. So um, I guess I'm not the only one in that boat. So I'm glad to hear that. Um, and now you signed with the Hurricanes for the 2021 Super Rugby season. Was there an easy decision, you know, as a born and bred Wellington boy um, to sign for the Hurricanes? And were there any other offers on the table from other unions or teams as well? Um, yeah, it's always always been a dream. Um, I've always lived in the Hurricanes region, and I was always used to to want to go watch the Hurricanes every every birthday I had. So 
Um, I didn't have any offers uh, from any other Super Rugby clubs, but even if I did, I would have you know stuck with the Hurricanes. Um, I've always wanted to play for them, so it's been a dream uh, come true, really. Now, always with the loyalty with your province, eh? I'm kind of the same. If you can see the background, you know, Western province on my side. <laughs> um, and an event, you know, I particularly enjoy each year is the World Rugby Under-20 competition, um, you know, which was said to be contested in Italy this year in July. But, you know, due to COVID, it had been cancelled. And um, you have been part of that New Zealand Under-20 squad, as far as I know. Um, do you feel that perhaps... And this is not just talking about yourself, but for all other players, that um, the fact that this competition couldn't go ahead this year, that it might have hampered the development of many under, under 20 players around the world, including yourself, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's um, it's a great program. You know, a lot of the, the great players that are playing right now at the, the highest level have come through that program. And to not have it this year is, is pretty guttering. Um, mm. And but yeah, you know, COVID's COVID, and you can't change what's happened. And um, you know, you're more worried about how the rest of the world is going. You're not worried about playing a rugby game as such. So yeah, it is guttering, but it is how it is, and everyone's pretty um, looking looking forward to to 2021. Hopefully, there's an under 20 program. Yeah, one can only hope, eh? And um, also, who are your rugby heroes you look up to locally and internationally? Um, you know, internationally, it would have to definitely be Cheslin Colby. Uh, I've always, I've always been, I've always been a fan of him. Um, I remember all, all the way through school and in 2015, um, even back then when he was, you know, even watching his, his under 20 highlights. Um, I've always been watching Cheslin Colby uh, every every chance I could for the last five years. Um, but pretty locally, my my dad was a was a hero of mine growing up. Uh, he taught me everything I know. Uh, we used to have a left foot uh, Thursday, where every Thursday we'd have to come home from school and cook on our left feet. We weren't allowed to cook on our right foot to develop the skill of cooking on both feet. So, um, yeah, you know, every skill I've been taught is, is purely from, from my father. Uh, awesome, man. Yeah, I was lucky enough on my side um, to see Jason Colby live and meet him on a, quite a few occasions, you know, because he played for the Stormers, which is my local team, obviously, in Cape Town. And um, I was always so mesmerized just by his talent and his skill. And um, I can tell you one thing, eh? like, I'm quite happy for the, for the guy because I, I honestly feel he wouldn't have become a Springbok if he actually stayed in Cape Town because he went to Toulouse and took his game to a whole nother level. I'm quite happy for the man. But um, it's, it's good to, to know that your, your heroes or one of your heroes are one of mine as well. So that's pretty cool, actually. <laughs> um, and on the cricket front, um, who's your heroes on that side of, of, the, of the sporting codes, um, both internationally and locally as well? It's funny as well. Um... Yeah, it's a, it's a funny one. You know, I've, I've always probably, ever since I picked up a cricket bat, Quinton de Kock's been, been my idol from South oh. Africa. So I'm not sure how or why, but, you know, both of my, my uh, sporting idols are from South Africa. Um, maybe because my mum has been in my area, but she, she lived in Fishhook, which is you know, obviously, you know, where Fishhook is by Cape Town. Yeah. She lived there for a number of years, her and her, and, um, her mum and dad. Um, I, I haven't been to South Africa personally, but... Um, she she holds South Africa pretty close to her heart, and um, I guess the way you know you guys play sport over there is um, in a way very different to to how we play in New Zealand. And some of the heroes that I've had, um, the way they play the game uh, over there, and but yeah, definitely for cricket, uh, Quinton de Kock uh, has always been, and I guess as long as he's playing, always will. Uh, I love the way he bats, and uh, he's, he's one of the best wicket keepers in the world. And I hope he takes his wicket keeping game to the next level because I really feel like he could be one of the greatest to, to ever do it. Yeah, also, um, I've actually watched the Proteus the other day um, playing the ODI against England. And um, okay. although we lost the match, um, we are in a bit of a dip now at the moment. Um, Quinny, as we call him this side, um, he's been one of the standout performers, you know, in a losing side. So um, definitely that holds a lot of merit that you're actually saying there. Um, also, I, I probably, I think that, you know, for yourself and many other New Zealand players, you know, each year with the Super Rugby competition, you would travel to South Africa. Um, obviously, it would have been your first time next year, you know, but COVID caused us to move north, and I'm not quite happy about it, to be honest. But um, do you feel a, a, a bit emptiness, you can say, you know, knowing that you sign with the Hurricanes now and you won't have a trip to South Africa next year? Um, yeah, it is, it is pretty different. You know, my whole life, uh, Super Rugby's always had the Springbok teams and 
uh, it's always had that you know element of of, of difference on how the the two countries play or three including australian mm. but you know I, I might not have gone to south africa next year with due to selection and stuff but um it, obviously it would have been awesome to to come to south africa if, if i had the opportunity but uh i'm only just just kind of starting out uh this this career so hopefully one day um i can come over and you know apply my apply my skills and you know hopefully pick up a few wins over there yeah, awesome, man. Maybe in a black jersey, you know, against the box in a couple of years. That would be awesome, actually. Um, because, like, uh, I always enjoy, you know, especially when New Zealand teams come to play in Cape Town. Um, I'm, I'm quite a fanatic myself, and um, I tend to watch every home game of the Stormers. And if there's a test match, um, especially when the All Blacks come to town, I, I make travel arrangements and I go watch, you know, a test match when African All Blacks play against each other. Um, and it's always exciting um, when these guys come and play there. You know, you meet the players, you mingle with them, and you get to take the selfies. You know how it goes. So, um, yeah, it's definitely a sad thing on my, on my side as well because, like I said, I quite enjoy it. But you know what? On my side, we will have new territory. We will, um, you know, enter now with the Pro 16, I think. Not quite sure how the competition will go forward. But, um, yeah, who knows? We get to see some Northern Hemisphere players never saw before. But uh, hopefully one day we can uh, see you, you guys and, um, you know, all your players of your side of the world as well again. So I'm quite looking forward to that, you know, should it come down to that. And, um, yeah, now to the, the more personal stuff. Um, what are your short-term goals um, for your time at Hurricanes as well as your long-term ones? Uh, I, guess, I guess my short-term goals for uh, right now the next few months and uh, most of the next year would be to basically just, just get it better every day. Um, mm. I wake up and question myself, you know, how can I get better today? And um, hopefully if I put my best foot forward uh, every day, it will lead me in good stead uh, for the future and um, hopefully give as much as I can to this Hurricanes franchise. Uh, long term, uh, I'd love to, you know, get a starting spot uh, at the Hurricanes and keep playing uh, for the team that I love. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good to have those long term goals, but I'm pretty, pretty focused on, um, on the process and what it takes to to get that to that long term goal. Now that's a good, good, a very good attitude to have, I would say. Um, you know, it's nothing wrong with looking forward, but um, you still have to build the foundation to actually build the house. I always say so. That's a very good um, vision you have there. And um, lastly, do you have any match day rituals um, that you perform before a game? Um, I like to I like to to stretch a lot. Uh, game day, I like to meditate, um, practice my mindfulness and um, rituals. I'm, I'm not really too sure. You know, I love listening to, to the same kind of music. I'm a very uh, process driven kind of guy. Um, I like everything laid out uh, every week the same. Um, and, and, you know, if I've ticked off the right process every week, then, you know, hopefully can lead it into a good performance and uh, bring results. But rituals, uh, not not really one to, that stands out, more just to, to chill and then, you know, kind of go on, a, on an upward curve uh, yeah. when arriving to the game and feeling the hype of the crowd and just basically for 80 minutes, just trying to become the best version of myself and express myself, uh, you know, doing what I've done since I was a kid. So, yeah, you know, I'm not sure if there's, there's a ritual in that. Oh, cool, man. I kind of sticking to the process all the way. Um, just one last question. I didn't prep this, you know, but I think it's important that I ask sure. this. Um, do you have any advice, you know, for, for school based school boys in your position? Um, you've just made it out of school and straight into a super happy contract, which doesn't happen often. Um, do you have any advice for, for boys who might not have an opportunity to get a pro contract as soon as you have? Um, and, um, basically just tell them, you know what, it will happen. Um, if you just work hard, but, um, on your side, what, what would you feel is the message for them? Yeah, well, if, if I had to go back and, and tell myself, you know, a thing or two last year would be be to basically just relax and have fun with your friends, you know. Um, Schoolboy rugby uh, were, the, were the best times of my life. Um, you know, I still talk to my friends. Actually, today, you know, I was talking to my friends today mm. about the schoolboy matches that I played and um, their memories for life. You know, the friends and, and the, the memories you take from, from the years that you have at school are the, are the best you'll ever have. And uh, a piece of advice... You know, when you leave school, just, just play to enjoy it. You know, if, if you're not enjoying it, you're not going to go far in it. Um, and if, you know, think doors will open 
doors will open if, if you really put your mind to it and, and, and go hard for it every day and put your best foot forward. And um, yeah, I guess it's okay to be different and, and try to stand out if you're, if you're trying to work hard for what you want. No, awesome, man. Well, Ruben, it's been an absolute honor and privilege to talk to you this morning while well, evening on your side, obviously. Um, yeah. I just had my morning coffee, so <laughs> it's uh, still pretty early here in South Africa. Yeah, you were saying? What time is it for, for you? Uh, it's 20 past eight on my side. So, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah I, I, I actually just woke up quite early this morning, you know, thinking, <laughs> gosh, I can't miss this interview now because I planned this all week. But um, it's been so good to talk to you, man. Um, and I wish you all, all the best you know, with your future endeavors and um, your time with the Hurricanes. And I hope to see you in the gold jersey next year and maybe in a couple of years in the black jersey as well. Um, and if you do uh, make the all black team, organize me a ticket for, um, for the test match. Just kidding, by the way. <laughs> no, no, of course, man. I appreciate you uh, giving up your time to, to talk to me. Um, yeah, no, I hope, I hope you're well, man. I appreciate the, the chat. Awesome, man. Well, guys, that's been it. That's a wrap. And um, th thanks again to Ruben Love for, for his time. And um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys soon. Uh, next week, we have a, a seventh specialist on the show. Um, I'm not going to mention names as per usual. I'll give you a couple of cases during the week on my page. I pitch chat with Angus. And um, yeah, I'll keep you in the loop with um, all matters rugby. But um, for now, guys, cheers. And um, Ruben, have a good day or have a good evening. And um, yeah, I'll talk to you all soon. Cheers. All right. You too. Bye-bye, man.